Well, today we're just out here doing some routine maintenance. I should say I'm out here doing some routine maintenance. We harvested 30 cabbages yesterday and a lot of beans. Um, but today I've got to start tying up some of my tomato plants that are trying to grow on the ground and just little things here and there to keep uh, the garden in good shape. I've noticed some squash bug eggs on my squash plants, so I wanna make sure I'm getting those off and trying to maintain that before it gets out of control. Unfortunately, they just always find your squash plants, I swear. If I didn't love zucchini so much, I wouldn't even, yeah, you gotta shut the gate, shut the gate. I wouldn't even bother. Um, but I've got so many squash and pumpkin plants going. I, you know, I've just got to get out here and see if I can't try to maintain um, and keep them from taking over the garden. I did want to show you though, uh, these pumpkin plants that I want to vine on this trellis here above me. These are the Jack B. Little uh, pumpkin plants that I loved growing in the past. And with very little maintenance, they are finding their way up the trellis. I initially just kind of set the first vine to where it was going up the trellis and really now on its own, it's, it's crawling up very nicely. There are a few stems um, or branches that are kind of coming out here at the bottom and I'll just have to tie those up. But really they do a good job on their own of, of learning how to grow up a trellis, which is really nice. Um, I can see that my chickens have been pecking my nasturtium leaves down here, which is annoying, but at least they're eating those and not the pumpkin plants, I guess. And I wanna show you this corn that has just grown astronomically since I last filmed in a beautiful, uh, I don't even know what color to call this, like rust purpley corn silk that are coming out of these baby corn heads. They're so beautiful. First of all, can you even, <laughs> this is my walkway. <laughs> my husband asked me why did you put pumpkins in here when I made you a pumpkin patch over there that's like perfectly empty but I had planted all of these before we even had the pumpkin patch set up so oh you know there's just always something every year that you have to kind of just figure out and go well next year I'll do this differently but isn't this beautiful it's just beautiful so I really do hope that uh, the squash bugs don't get in here and completely decimate all this because it's just lovely. Um, I don't even know how I'm going to be able to get in here and check all these leaves. I'm kind of just hoping um, I have a chicken that comes in here and lays its egg every day that maybe she's helping to eat some of the predators and that just the natural ecosystem that a garden will set up. Um, like there's little garden snakes in here that they will help with some of the bug control. Um, and nature just might have to do its thing. But what I wanted to show you is this corn here that continued to grow taller even though it sent up its tassels. Look how different they look from the last time I videoed this. Aren't they beautiful? And then check out this corn silk. It is so pretty. This is just a butter crunch. Um, butter crunch. What is it called? Uh, a sweet corn that variety that I planted. But look at this. Isn't this beautiful? I've never seen this before. This coloring. I would expect this on like a a flint corn or a jewel corn, but this is just regular sweet corn that's growing here. Um, and it's just so lovely out here in the garden. My plan today, like I said, is to try to trellis some of these uh, tomato plants that have just gotten crazy out of control despite all my efforts to keep them under control. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you have to be out in the garden every day, even if just for 10 to 20 minutes. I'm trying to get through this without stepping on my vines um, because things can just grow so quickly in the height of summer. Um, and I, I'll admit, I haven't been out here as frequently as I would like just because there's been some other things that we've had to take care of in the house. But isn't this just beautiful? I swear a month ago, this was empty ground or almost empty ground. And now I'm just surrounded by greens and yellows and purples and pinks and all kinds of just beautiful things going on here in this garden. Dill is just glorious. Look at it, it's just so beautiful. I don't even know, I mean, I don't cook with a lot of dill, although I love dill and I will, I am looking at recipes to be able to use this, but I just love it for the beauty. I love that it feeds the monarchs and the swallowtails and this is just beautiful. It's as tall as I am 
and it just adds so much color. The dragonflies love to rest on it. Let's see if I can get that guy in the photo. Oops, there he went. Um, it's just lovely, so pretty. And I think I hear my chicken in here. Let's see if I can locate her. She's been laying her egg in here every day and snacking on zucchini nearby. Are you in here, DJ? Are you hiding amongst the plants? I definitely hear a chicken somewhere. I've got cherry tomatoes that are getting really close to being ready to eat. These guys should be ready here in the next, ah, maybe a week or so to be uh, edible, which is really exciting to know that we might have fresh uh, tomatoes here in the next little bit, especially these cherry tomatoes. Uh, my tomatillas are prolific and getting big. So we should have tomatillas here in the next couple weeks for sure. Look how huge this plant is. I'm gonna have to come in here and clean some of this up. And these are the tomato plants that are falling on the ground that I've got to trellis up today and get trimmed back to where they're manageable. And my squash plant that is growing from over there through my tomato garden. And it'll probably make its way over into that section, which is hilarious. Here's my black beauty tomatoes that are looking lovely. And my pork chop back in there. My cosmos are coming in. Those are, oh, I think I have a bloom. I do, look at that. First Cosmo bloom, so pretty. All my peppers are looking huge. And my Thai basil. I've got blooms on my sunflowers. These are um, a gray stripe, as I think, I think of what these are called, these smaller ones, I think. And then these are the mammoth ones behind them that are still growing, but they have heads on them that'll bloom here in the next few weeks. One thing I'm gonna do to be able to get uh, through my garden here without stepping on these vines is I'll, I'm gonna clear some of these leaves that are right in my pathway. And it's not gonna hurt the plant. It will allow for me to get through without squashing the plant. Uh, the plant has plenty of leaves, but if you're kind of having the same issue that your garden is outgrowing you, you can absolutely prune it to be more workable for you and it'll be uh, beneficial to the plant. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So here's my walkway and obviously I've got these squash plants going through here. So I am just going to clear out some of these uh, leaves so that I can find my way um, without squashing the plant. And it's very similar to what I showed you in the last video to just prune them um, to get air to the plant, to help the pollinators find the flowers. And in this case, to help me get across my garden. <laughs> so I apologize if the filming is wonky. I'm literally just walking across here, filming it as I chop. But, oh shoot, did I just cut, I just cut the vine. <laughs> you know, I did, I just cut this vine. But really, that's okay because it's got another huge vine going this way. And I can also come in here and tape this. If I put tape or foil around this, it'll still, um, get water through here. So it not all is not lost. I was actually meaning to cut this and I accidentally cut that, but I can come and tape that and it should still survive. And if it doesn't, I mean, cause look at this, this is where my son stepped on the vine and completely squashed it yet. It is still growing all the way over there. So just know these plants are very hardy. So I'll have to come back and fix that. But this is what I was trying to cut. There we go. I was also gonna show you, if you see this, let me get down here where you can see it. If you see a fruit like this, this is just a fruit that wasn't pollinated. Um, it just means that the bee did not make it to the flower and so it didn't, it didn't survive basically. There's plenty of other fruits that will get pollinated, but if you see this, it doesn't mean anything's wrong with your plant. It just means it didn't get pollinated. And cutting out these like yellowing rotting leaves like this will also help with like um, pill bug management and or roly polies as some would call them um, and slugs. If you can get all this rotting green out, it also helps with some pest management. So I'm clearing the walkway here, making progress. 
Found some mushrooms, which means there's life in the soil. That's good. So see, I now have a walkway. Much easier to get through, and I will have to keep this maintained every time I come in here. And you can still see the vines coming across here, but at least I know where to step now uh, and won't have, I'll have much less apt to squash my plants. But see, you can do so much to maintain and train your plants. And I'm gonna cut these big leaves out of here. And let me see if I can find some squash bugs uh, to show you while I'm out here. I have not found squash bug eggs yet. I found them the other day, but I got them out, so that's a good sign. But I did want to show you this right here. If you notice your plant leaves looking super lacy, um, it could be anything from cucumber plants, potato plants, there's a flower they eat that for some reason I'm blanking on the name of. Um, and here I'm finding them on my squash plants. This is a Japanese beetle, and they are so annoying. Um, I'm trying to remember what I've used in the past. I think it's neem oil works really well to get rid of these guys. But I mean, you can just squish them. I mean, I'm just gonna squish this. Uh, I found them on my potato plants yesterday and here they are on my squash plants. So you can squish them. You can drop them into soapy water. You can spray neem oil um, at night um, if you're noticing them on certain plants. But they will definitely eat your leaves to, to look like lace. So if you see this, you wanna get rid of this. Okay, friends, this right here is squash bug, squash bug eggs right there. That's what they look like. They're pretty easy to spot because they contrast so much with the green. But if you see this on the underneath side of your, your plant, these are squash bug eggs and you need to get rid of them. The best thing to do is to scrape them off with like a butter knife, which will kill them to mash them, which I find it's harder to mash them, or to burn the leaves that you find them on. Squash bug eggs, they go in like a 10 day cycle. So if you can find them at this point and get rid of them, you are going to help stop the life cycle of these animals, animals, of these insects. So I am just going to uh, lay this in my um, get rid of pile over here. I'll either burn these. I'm gonna, right now, I'm just gonna mash this with my boot to help make sure that they are dead. And then I'm gonna keep looking for more. This is the third leaf in the last few days that I have found. And I think two days ago, I actually saw an actual squash bug. If you're familiar with stink bugs, then you know what a squash bug looks like. They look the same color and basic body shape of a stink bug, except they're a little bit longer and more pointy. And they do smell when you squish them, but they are a different creature. So you might wanna look up, and I'll put an image in this video, of what a squash bug looks like. Again, looks like a stink bug, but longer and pointier. And if you see an adult, you need to get that thing and drop it in soapy water ASAP or squish it with your boot or get rid of it. Because once you start seeing more adults, you know that you've got an out of hand problem. So far, I've only found one, um, but I'm gonna continue to come out here and look on a regular basis just to make sure it's not getting out of hand, which is what I'm doing right now. And cutting leaves as I see them.